Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Thank you. Oh, be lifted. Oh, 
glorious God. We praise your name. We lay our crowns and worship you. You are the glorious God. We praise your name. We lift our and worship you. Hands up, hearts open wide as she. Let 
at the mention of the name of Jesus, fade away. The name that above every other name, fade away. At the mention of the name of Jesus, fade away. At the mention of the name of Jesus, fade away. At the mention of the name of Jesus, fade away. At the mention of the name of Jesus, fade away. At the mention of the name of Jesus, fade away. At the mention of the name of Jesus, fade away. At the mention of the name of Jesus, fade away. Hallelujah. Hi, my name is Esther Beninoff. Welcome to Ruach Prayer Conference 2022. Today we are going to be discussing about a very important subject dear to God's heart and also mine because God had used this team to speak to me, to bring me to the place of intimacy and closeness with him. What is an altar? An altar is simply a structure or a place where we offer, where we come to offer sacrifices and burn incense unto God in worship, in prayer, in supplications, and in intercessions. So prayer, um, um, altar is a place of communion with God, simply put. And in Genesis chapter 8, Noah was the first person to raise an altar unto God. After the, uh, the flood, he came out of the ark and immediately in thanksgiving, in, in gratitude to God for sparing them from the flood, he offered of the clean animals a burnt offering unto God. And after that, Noah uh, after Noah, another person that of the patriarchs that picked up that um, lifestyle was Abraham. Abraham had several altars that he raised up. Every time Abraham met with God, he would raise an altar unto him. And one of those important ones are the, was the one that God began to tell him that he, his descendants were going to go into Egypt in captivity. And the Bible tells us of how God told him what to do. And God came and com confirmed his covenant with Noah, I mean, with Abraham. So altar, again, is a place of communion, a place where our relationship with God is truly expressed. It is a daily uh, um, place of communion with God. So today we want to take a look at um, the subject and go to the first scripture, which is found in Genesis. Genesis. Genesis 35. Genesis 35. And I'll read from verse 1. Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Now, in, in my own Bible, I circled the word and dwell there because to dwell, it's very, very important. He says, and dwell there. Don't just rise up and go. But he says, stay there, a permanent place. So an altar is a place where it's not just something we go to once in a while. It has to be a place where we go. It, it will become part of our dwelling place because it's a place of consistency. So meaning, therefore, God is saying that we should um, be in, um, in our altars regularly and make an altar there to God. The altar is not to man, it's not to anybody, but to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of your brother Esau. Verse 2, and Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods 
So look at, we have we already seen the demands of altar. Put away the foreign gods that are amongst you because these things, these foreign gods will stop us from going to our altars. He says, put away your foreign gods that are amongst you and purify yourselves and change your garment. Then let us rise up and go to better and I will make an altar there to God who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. Hallelujah. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the terebrine tree which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, which is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him, and he built an altar there and called it El Bethel, because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother Esau. Praise God. Hallelujah. So here, remember I in my intro, I said that men, righteous men, lovers of God, God uh, men who have uh, uh, um, um, had contact with God, like Noah, like Abraham, like Isaac, Every one of them, when God meets with them, they build an altar and they burnt sacrifices to thank him, to appreciate him, to, 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 to bring down his presence in their life and also to have a revelation of who God is. The revelation Noah had of God was different from the one that Abraham had and the one that Isaac had. Now, this is the first time God is commanding and demanding that a man, a heir of salvation, build an altar unto him. Now, why? Because Jacob had promised in Genesis 28, he said when he was running away from, from his brother Esau, he said to the Lord when he got to that particular place in the land of Lord's at the time, he said when he saw that revelation of God, he says he saw in a dream a ladder um, ascending and descending from heaven. Angels on it going up and down. And at the top of the ladder, he saw God himself sitting down there and God speaking with him. And he said, this is the house of God. And I didn't know it. And he called that place, that first revelation, that first sight of God that he had, he called it El Bethel, the God of the house of God. Now we look at it. He said, God first, and then the house of God. That is what our altars should be. That is what our gatherings should be. Your church, my church, the church of Jesus Christ should be the God of the house of God. Without the God of the house of God, the house of God is empty. And that's what we are experiencing in, in, in many of our so-called worship services because we've removed the God of the house of God. So it's just the house of God, but the God with capital D, um, a T H E and G O D is absent. The very presence of God, the reason for the altar, the reason for the house is missing. And God is saying it's time to, to truly, not only to return there, but, but to restore the God of the house of God. So that is very important for us to notice. And he said to him, rise up. You are in a place where you have no business being there. God 
when he met with him in Genesis 32 and transformed him, hallelujah, and blessed him there after Jacob held on to him and they wrestled. The plan was that he will go to Bethel, but Jacob made a detour and went to Shechem instead. Are we in Shechem? And God is saying, no, that's not a that's not the place I want you to be. That place is not the 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 the, the I mean the house of God. So get up, go and fulfill your promise to me. Go back to better. Go back to better. And God is saying this to us. And I want to thank God for Roak for the organizers of Roak conference, prayer conference, for bringing it back and for this team, because it's important. In chapter 34, you look at all the mess that happened to Jacob and his family. Chapter 34 is, 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 if you take it out, there are two chapters in scriptures that I, whenever I read them, I cry or I want to cry. My heart is full because the kind of evil and wickedness that happened to God's people in some of those chapters is just unbelievable. Praise God. And there, his daughter who went to socialize with the people of Shechem, with the women of Shechem, was raped. And there, her brothers became mass murderers. They got up in anger, in revenge, and they went and killed all the men, plus the man that raped their sister because it was an abomination for, for, for a young Jewish uh, um, maiden, a virgin maiden, to be raped by a stranger. It was an abomination and they couldn't take it. So they went and took revenge and killed all the men in that city. Not only did they kill the men, they took all their property and all the women. Praise God. And God said, Jacob, you cannot be here. I can't meet with you here in Shechem. This is not the, 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 the house of God. This is not the God of the house of God. So go back to the place of covenant. Go back to the place of intimacy, to the place where you burn incense, where I can meet with you. Thank God this time, maybe because of all that has happened, that Jacob obeyed God because he had seen the evil. He knew he had lost his family if he did not rise up from Shechem. And he left. This time, now Jacob was afraid, full of fear. Why? Because the neighboring cities we are, were all on a war path to deal with Jacob and his sons who had committed such atrocity. The Bible did not say the number of men that were killed, but that town, Shechem, was completely destroyed. Praise God. And God is saying to us that it is time for us to go back to Bethel, to the God of the house of God. Our nation, Nigeria, needs the church the family of God, the people of God, you and I to go back to the God of the house of God and begin to raise altars of prayers, of intercessions, of supplications, of crying out to him to save Nigeria. We need to, we need to begin to raise altars in our own homes for our families so that we will be spared from this outrage, from this wickedness, from this darkness that is invading the nation and the nations of the earth. It is only a people of altars like Abraham that will bring salvation, deliverance to the families of God in Nigeria in the whole world and also to the nations of God. 
the nations that God has said we are to take for him. Praise God. It is from our altars. Many of us, like Jacob, have neglected those altars. And God is saying, it's time. If we want to see change in Nigeria, if we want to see revival in Nigeria, in the church, many of these things are happening in the church. The wickedness outside, it's not good, it's bad. But when it gets into the church, you know that it, it's so close home because you don't know what is going to happen next. Only a people of the altar can, can separate themselves because God will protect them as they stay, as they dwell, hallelujah, in the place of the God, of the house of God. Praise God. An altar is, it's not something you just do once in a while. That's why he said to him, he says, go and dwell there. So altars are supposed to be permanent thing. It's supposed to be something we do on a regular basis, not just once in a while. That's why when altars are built, they are literally made permanent. Some of those memor uh, uh, memorials that God, uh, Abraham raised are still there. Till date, archaeologists have discovered them because they were of a permanent nature. Whenever Abraham is, wherever he goes, he will still see some of those um, um, altars. Altars require consistency and diligent attention. Praise God. Altars need to be refreshed. In Leviticus, the Bible said that the altar, the, 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 the altar of incense must not go out. It must not go out. That fire must burn 24 7. There must be fresh fire every 24 hours. The priest, only the priest can do that, comes in, take out the, 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 the ashes and all that as the burnt wood and put fresh, hallelujah, fresh fire, fresh oil, fresh wood, so that that altar must continue to burn. The reason why our altars are not working and functioning as it should, it's because they, they, we've neglected them. We're not giving the altars the attention that they require. Let's read another scripture. We're going to come back to our main text, which is Genesis 35. But let's take a look as kings. What what I'm trying to talk about, that altars need consistent and diligent attention. Maybe Jacob was not ready for that lifestyle, for that walk. Maybe that's why he didn't go. But God made a demand and God is making a demand on you and on me in this hour. That, listen, my children, it's time. It's time to go back and build those altars and make sure that they, uh, they are refreshed consistently, persistently. Because listen, people of God, without us refreshing those altars, the fire of God will not fall. Hallelujah. In chapter 17, <clears throat> Elijah said there's going to be drought. And the drought came and it was heavy and so much happened. Then God said to Elijah, please go back. Go back. Go back and reverse that word. And reverse that word so that my people can have rain and be refreshed. Nigeria needs to be refreshed. Our families need to be refreshed. When I heard what was going on in the families of God's people, I 
listen, we, 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 I, myself and, and, and some of us who, who, who love our country and who, 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 who love because we are family people who love the family of God. We, we immediately rose up. We were supposed to just pray for one hour before we knew it for four hours. We were crying. God, have mercy. Save our families. Deliver our families. Deliver the violence that has come against the families of God. This is what happened <clears throat> to uh, Elijah. The first thing he did was also to build an altar. Now, his was even a little bit different, be different because there was already an altar that had been neglected. The altar was broken down. And when he came back, he, the first thing he did was to repair the altar of God. Verse 30 of First Kings chapter 18. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people of God who have abandoned God, who have neglected the altar of God, because they were now all going, they have built a false altar. Their kings and their the, the, uh, and, and all of the, the king's men have built for, false altar of Baal. So they were all worshiping Baal. God was upset. And in the place of the intercession, Elijah said, I will do something. And he declared a drought over the nation. And look at it. So all the people came near to him and he repaired the altar of God that was broken down. So now remember, this was 20 years. The first time Jacob built the altar at El Bethel was 20 years ago. 20 years after. Now, instead of him to go back, he still made a detour with, to Shechem, which took some, some more years. And so God was now demanding, is the altar in our lives broken down? Is the altar in our churches broken down? Are we not uh, born in incense, pure incense to the God of heaven and earth, to the God who loved us and saved us and have kept us? Have we neglected and we are now going on to build pseudo altars? And God is saying, if you want deliverance for your families, for your nation, then you need to go back to El Bethel and build that altar and repair it. So he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be your name. Then the stones, with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench round about it enough to hold two seers of seed. Uh, let's keep a, a few verses. And Elijah now ready to pray, to offer up supplication, to offer up incense unto God. Verse 37, he says, hear me, O Lord. Hear me that these people may know that you are the Lord and that you have turned their hearts back to you. Now, remember in Genesis 35, we read where God said, go back. Elijah is saying the same thing. He says, God, turn their hearts back to you. The reason for all that Elijah did was not to show off. It is that God's people will return back to him. So altar is our meeting point with God. It is there he takes away the, the unclean clothes that we have put on, the clothes of the flesh, the clothes of the worldliness that we have put on, the clothes of compromise, the all kinds of evil and compromise and wickedness that we have put on. And Jacob said to his children, take it off, take it off and put on new garments, put on clean garments. 
And that's what the Bible says in Colossians. He says, put off the garment, the old garment, the, 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 the old self, and put on the garment that is being created after the likeness of God in holiness and in true righteousness. That's the garment that we ought to put on. And it happens at the altar of the Lord. When our hearts are turned back, God is demanding repentance. To turn back our hearts to him is repentance. Repentance, men and brethren, is a good word. It's not a bad word. It simply means we are turning away from our fleshly and carnal selves and we are going back to God. We are saying, God, we are sorry. You are right. We are the one who missed the way, but we are coming back home. We're coming back home. We're coming back to the place where we belong. Hallelujah. And when he has done that, simple prayer, simple prayer of repentance, simple prayer of repentance, people of God, simple prayer, God, hear me, hear me. I know your heart. That's why I have come. I know that your heart is still after your people. And the Bible said, as soon as he finished saying that, the fire of God fell to consume the sacrifice. Why is there no fire in our lives? Because our altars have been neglected. Hallelujah. We need to sincerely, seriously raise altars for our family like Job did. The Bible said continuously as his children grew old and left, 10 of them, as they grew old, older, and left home, the Bible says Job will get offering and burn sacrifices to God for each of his 10 children. When they are partying, when they are with their friends, when they are making merriment, he says, why? Paradventure. They have cursed God in their hearts. Fathers, arise and begin to build altars unto God, raise altars in our homes for our children, for our family members, so that they will be spared by the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Some years ago, that's why I said this, this theme of altars is so precious to me and dear to my heart because God taught me a lot. I was like, I, I, Look at myself as a woman of prayer. But when God opened my eyes, there was a season in my life that I was struggling. I think I was, uh, I had, uh, just had a child. So I was struggling to pray. I was struggling to raise, uh, um, wake up in the morning and gather my children, my family members, those who dwell with me. Something I do on a regular basis, on a daily basis, no matter how tight it is, no matter how difficult it is, I do that before they go to school, before we, 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 we go on to do anything we're doing. We've got to have. I didn't know how God takes those moments seriously. I didn't know. And I was, you know, one morning, the Lord woke me up. He said, get up. I said, Lord, I'm tired. You know, the new baby, this, that. I said, I'm not able to do it anymore. Lord. And he says, get up. He says, so because you are tired, so there will be no incense. Those are the words. There will be no incense. There will be no worship from your home reaching me. It says, I've passed through and there is no incense. I can't see the fire. I can't see the smoke of the incense. That was when I knew that God takes those morning devotion you, we have so seriously. I said, God, please help me. I'm not able to do it. And the Lord said to me, all right, get up. Ask me 
to bring you into that place, into that office, into that grace, where you make sure no matter what happens, that that altar will be burning. And I said, Lord, please, I'm here. I lifted up my hands. I said, Lord, I surrender. Help me. Teach me how. Strengthen me. Lord, give me, bring me to enter that grace. And I never forget it. He did that and my life was changed completely. From that day, no matter, except I'm in the hospital, except so, I'm, I'm there waking everybody up. Praise God until they left home. When they left home, I began, in fact, even before they left home, three days to their birthday, like Job, I will raise an altar and cry out to them. Does it mean they are not having challenges? Oh, I am, oh man, if you know my challenges, you, you, will, you will pray. You will pray you, because you will say, if this woman, if this woman is still praying, is still going out there. Then you will say, God, please give me that grace too. There is grace available, available, people of God. Single mothers, women. I don't want to hear that excuse. As God told me that he didn't want to hear it because grace is available. Grace is available. Nobody is excused. He is making that demand even much more now for you, for me. I'm beginning to see the holes in my own altar. And I'm praying, asking God for grace, for mercy, telling him, ah, God, I need to do better. Please, God, help me take away the weakness of the flesh. Take away the excuses that I gave. He's teaching me again to go back there. So this is the moment. Let's begin to raise altars for our families. Because you see, the place of altars, I said it before, is the place of revelation. Revelation of, what, of who God is, of what he is doing in your family, of what is happening around you in your community, even in the nation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. God will begin to show you the reason why we get tired easily because we don't know what we ought to be praying. And because we are not frequent, we are not consistent at the altar, we don't know what we ought to pray. But when you are a person that is consistent, that you have dwelt at El Bethel, God will always reveal himself to you, show you what is going on, how you ought to pray. And the greatest language of prayer is, 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 is uh, praying in tongues, praying in the, in the spirit so that you generate the power of the Holy Ghost within you to pray even when you are tired. The altar is the place of revelation of God's presence. That's what happened to Jacob. God revealed himself to Jacob afresh. Afresh. Now, if you read the rest of the chapter, you will see when he got there and he built the altar, the Bible says God did something. Number one, when, when the eyes and the understanding of Jacob was enlightened at the altar, he poured, remember the first altar, it was just oil he poured. Now he raised it, he raised stones again, and now he poured a drink offering. Why? Now he can afford more. He can afford more. He now understands what God, the things that God had delivered him from over the years. So he was now um, extravagant in his worship. So he poured wine as an offering on that altar. And God revealed himself and showed up. He said to him, 
no more. I'm establishing you as the father of many nations. He says, your name will no longer be Jacob. Never again. Because, yes, I changed your name in Genesis 32 at Penuel. Penuel, he had an encounter with God, a powerful encounter that transformed his life. But I, I don't think that he got it. And so in Genesis 35 at El Bethel, he had to tell him, listen, your name is not Jacob. Stop living like Jacob. Stop living in your flesh. Stop living in your own mind and in your own understanding, in your old way of thinking. I can do it by myself. I, I got it. I have wisdom. I am this. I am that. No, forget all of that. Because at the altar, when you come, you strip yourself of all that you are. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was talking to um, 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 a woman of God, my wonderful prayer partner. We pray all the time together. Hallelujah. And so we haven't seen in a while. So, and I was talking with her and she said to me, you know, you, there is, she said to me, Esther, you need to deal with something. I said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? And she said to me, she called me out. He says, this, your, oh, I don't want to bother anybody. I don't, so you don't talk to people. You, you are just there. Meanwhile, you are dying. You, 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 why, why would you do that? I'm here with you in this city and you're going through all this. You, you didn't call me. How dare you? And she said to me, sister, that is concealed pride. Deal with it. Well, but I knew she was telling the truth. And immediately, immediately, I told her, sister, thank you for calling, uh, a woman of God, thank you for calling me out. The truth is, I didn't know. Because for me, I was thinking, I was mindful of you. And your busyness, your time, you're always, you know, on the go. Many times I don't know when to reach you because she said, no, that's no excuse. Leave message, you know, and all that. She said, it's concealed. I said, God, I didn't know. So I went to the altar of God. I stripped and I said, God, in case, in case I don't want anything that will be, how can I be concealing pride? My goodness, I stripped myself and I said, God, deal with it. Reach deep down, reach deep down and deal with this matter. It, it has no business being here. Why am I sharing this with you? That even the best of us, there are some things that can hide and the altar, the more we go to the altar, the more we stay, we dwell at El Bethel. The more the light of God shines upon us, the fire of God burns, it will burn away all these things that we didn't even know are there. He will reveal himself to us who he is, what he is dealing with in our lives. He will talk to us like Abraham. Hallelujah. Amen. Can God stop by your house and say, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Hallelujah. There's something going on in your neighborhood. This is what is going on in your next door neighbor. There is problem. There is a sick child. I want you to raise the matter and to me and pray. Talk to me about the matter. How can he come to you? He went to Abraham. He says, I'm in the neck of your neighborhood and I've heard wicked and evil things happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. Talk to me about it. And the Bible says, Abraham drew near still. The altar is our place to draw near still to God to draw more closely to him and talk to him about Nigeria. God, this is what is happening. God, this is what is happening in my community. God, you have to come. Only you can deliver us. If you don't show up, we are in a big mess. This is what is happening in my family. Oh God. 
You've got to do something. Can God trust you? If there is no altar, he will show up. If, your, if the fire on the altar has gone out and you have, we have neglected it like Israel did, it will take us to repair the altar for that fire to fall again. And for the heart of, of our families, the heart of our city and nation to be turned back to him. The fire, God wants to, the reason why he has sent Roach in this season is to remind us that he wants the fire to fall. He has uh, um, received incense from a few places in our country, uh, but he wants it to spread. He wants the fire to spread like wildfire. He wants it to ignite, not just only us at Roark. He wants that fire to, 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 to ignite every believer. In a thousand meters radius, I dare to say. So that everyone would come. That fire will be ignited. That's what we, we want to achieve at this year's conference. Light your fire. This is an altar. Come, light your own fire. Repair your altar. Light your fire. Take it to your family. Light your family altar. Take it to your on your job, your business, your career. Wherever you do life, go, light it. That is the command. That is the demand of the Lord. He says, let the fire fall. As soon as, it, as soon as the heart of the people, you see how repentance and stripping yourself and acknowledging that you are wrong. I am wrong. The church is wrong. I don't care the excuse we are given. We are wrong. We need to repent. There is, there is so much happening on that that we don't know about, that we should know about. When we repent, when we acknowledge that he is right, then we begin to worship. Then incense begin to flow. Rise up to him. I'm going to read another very important scripture as we begin to go into the place of prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read Revelations chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8 from verse 1. It says, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about an hour. And I saw seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a gold censer, came and stood at the altar. He was giving much incense at the altar. So there is altar in heaven. There is an altar in heaven, an altar that, that your altar, my altar, the church, the, the, uh, the altar of Roach, the altar of, 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 of our local churches, of the body of Christ, of the ministries of God will burn and feed that altar as our incense, as our petitions goes up, this great angel who has been given much incense, will pour it with our own uh, um, incense and prayers and supplications and intercessions. And he said, he was given much incense that he would offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. So. If we have neglected our altar, you can see that, that there is nothing reaching God from us. As a nation, as a church, as a community, as a family. Is there smoke rising from your life? Your life, my life, your spirit, your heart, my heart should be an altar to the Lord. Why? Because the Holy Spirit indwells us. So we are walking, we are going about our business. We are making melodies to him. He's speaking to us. We are hearing, we are responding. 
We're authoring what my pastor will call um, 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 one second prayers because it's under your breath. They are so quick, but the Holy Spirit hears them and understands them. That incense mingled with all the prayers of the saints ascended before God. The angel is there. He wants to take your, 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 your prayers from your altar. Every worship, he wants to take it, but he has to add incense. So if you have nothing to offer, if nothing is coming to, from me, from my family, like it happened a few years ago, when in his infinite mercy, in his infinite mercy, he came and said, daughter, get up. Get up. If he didn't love me, if he was not a merciful God, I would have continued in my ignorance and blame everybody else instead of taking responsibility that as a child of God, I ought to be offering of up so that the angel of the Lord will add incense to my prayers and to my supplications and worship and present it before the Lord. Verse five, then the angel of the Lord took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar of God that is before the throne of God and threw it down the earth and there were noises, thunderings, lightnings and an earthquake. So the answer of judgment that will come upon God's enemy and your enemies does not come from you. When we walk on our altars, when we stay in the place of our altars, when we make sure there is fire in our altars, when we make sure incense is burning, we are making supplications and intercessions. We are groaning before God for our city, for our families, for the families of God that we know. We are crying out, oh God, have mercy. Then God, takes that prayer and pours it down and it comes as judgment upon his enemy and the enemy of the church, your enemy, the enemy of every child of God. So he is the one. So let's not waste time killing witches. Hey, die, 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 die. They are not dead. It's not you. Go and tend your altar. Are you listening to me? Go and tend your altar. That is the place of rulership. That is the place of authority. When we have authority with God, then God will deal with the enemy of your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Who dealt with uh, um, um, Job's uh, uh, um, friends that were accusing him? God, it wasn't Job. He told them, you better, before I deal with you, you better go and, and, and repent and let him pray for you. It's not us. Except the Lord tells you, rise up, deal with that enemy. This is his name. This is where, what he's doing. Then you do it because he has given you authority. But why will we spend instead of, uh, um, but causing, um, um, asking God to turn us and turn our nation, turn the church of Jesus Christ back to God as Elijah did. Elijah didn't waste time. It was after the fire has fell that he said, okay, gather them. Do not allow them. Why? Because they are, the enemy was already afraid. The prophets of Baal, when they, they saw their God has failed them. And Elijah said, now is the time. Gather them and kill them. Hallelujah. But we've got to minister and tend our altars so the fire can fall. So revival can come. 
We are praying for revival. But we've got to do the work. How can you, how can you say, say you're praying for revival, but there is no, there is no, you, the, your, your, your altar is left unattended. We've got to go back. In Genesis 15, as we begin to pray, what happened? God not only renewed his covenant, the altar is a powerful place of covenant. He renewed his covenant with Jacob. The, the covenant that he made with Abraham, he says, all of it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure it is fulfilled in your life, in your time, in your generation. And the people, once Jacob turned, the people who he was afraid of became afraid of him. So they left without their enemies pursuing them. It started with a decision to go back and build the altar of God. Praise God. The altar is a powerful place. We surrender there, our thoughts, our feelings, our desires. It allows God to scrutinize us and take out all the junk that has no business being there. Praise God. So we've got to pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, I come before you. Lord God Almighty, with my brethren, Lord, at Roa Prayer Conference, we come to lift up this altar before you, that from today, oh God, Lord God Almighty, that as this conference continues, that Lord, everyone's fire will be lit in the name of Jesus, that every altar that is represented here, Lord, will be set ablaze, and they will take that fire to their homes, Lord, to their places of work and career and business and to the cities and nations in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, oh God, because we dare to believe you that, Lord, at this conference, Lord, oh God, that Roach will be set ablaze, that this altar of God that has been dedicated to you will be set ablaze again in the name of Jesus Christ and everyone oh God will be revived and we will light our own lights and fires and candles from it in the name of Jesus Lord, we come, Lord God, to strip ourselves, uh, Father Lord, from every pride, from every religious spirit, uh, from every error, from everything that we are doing that is not right. Those of us that have neglected our altars, uh, we come in repentance. Uh, my Father, my God, uh, Jacob repented uh, and his family repented. Uh, they Put away the foreign gods. Lord, at this altar, we put away all the foreign gods. Everything we have, every pseudo altar we have built. Today, we destroy those pseudo, pseudo altars. And we raise in righteousness, in purity, an altar unto you and to you alone. God most high, El Shaddai, Elohei. The Lord who is our help, the God of the house of God, we come to enthrone you, be enthroned at Roach Prayer Conference, be enthroned in our own lives, my Father and my God, Lord of oh God, that the fire that will fall from this conference, Father, Lord of oh God Almighty, it will bring judgment, Lord, unto every evil and wickedness. Lord, in our families, Lord God, or everything that have prevented us from serving you, from being holy and righteous unto you, that Lord, the fire will burn them up, that they will not escape in the name of Jesus. Lord, everything that has been troubling your church, heresies, oh God, heresies, false prophets, my father, that the fire of God that will be, that will descend upon Roaka, Lord God Almighty, 
Father Lord, oh God, as our incense, as our petitions reaches you, that it will fall upon the enemies of your church as lightnings, as voices, as earthquake, and it will destroy every confidence the enemy has to terrorize your church. Father, from this altar today, we are asking that you will judge the enemy of our souls because your enemy is our enemy. The one that will not allow us to live in peace. The one that has terrorized the church of Jesus Christ that today, as this fire is lit, it will consume the enemy of our souls in the name of Jesus. But Lord, that your church will arise in purity, in holiness, in righteousness, in truth, in the name of Jesus. Father, we also pray, O oh God Almighty, that the, 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 the wickedness that is terrorizing the church of Jesus Christ, that is the, in the underbelly of the church, Father, Lord God Almighty, when they went to Babylon, you said to them, pray, pray ceaselessly for Babylon so you can live in peace. Father, Lord, oh God, we pray for Nigeria. We pray for the U.S. Lord, that your people will dwell in peaceable habitations in Nigeria in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We remove the ashes. Father, forgive us for the neglect of our altars. We remove the ashes because ashes do not burn. Ashes do not burn. Ashes do not burn. We remove the ashes of prayerlessness. We remove the ashes of, 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 of wickedness. Father, Lord, oh God, of sleepiness. We remove it. We remove those ashes, my Father, and we bring wood. We bring your word back to our altars. We bring a heart of worship and gratitude back to our altars in the name of Jesus. We repair it to God. We repair it. We repair it. We bring your word back to you. As we kneel down, as we prostrate, Father, Lord, oh God, no wonder you said in Matthew 6, 6, he says, if you want to pray, enter your room, Close the door and pray to your father who is in secret. My father, you said, and your father who sees in secret will also answer you. And when that answer comes, it will be on display so that they will say, Oh God, like the psalmist said, see what the Lord, see what great things the Lord has done for them. That will be the testimony of every family God represented at Roac Prayer Conference 2022. We praise you. Lord, we, we, we acknowledge that you are the God of the house of God. El Betel, we enthrone you again. We enthrone you. Come and be the Lord. Sit on the throne of our hearts. Sit Lord God, on the throne of our homes, Lord God Almighty of your church, we enthrone you in our nation, Nigeria. Jesus is Lord of Nigeria. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Thank you very much um, um, for having me. I pray that this conference will be a turnaround that our story as the people of God, as the people of God will change, as a nation, as families will change. Why? Because the fire will fall at Ruach Prayer Conference 2022. And we all will be empowered, enlightened. We will be set ablaze as we go into the next year. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see you again.